Hey everybody, this is Joe. Thank you for watching my Giga Texas construction update video. Hey everybody, welcome back to Giga Texas. It's Friday, the 10th of March, 2023. And it's a little bit cooler today than it has been in the past few days. A couple of things here for the intro before we get into the video. Here on the south end, you can see that they've resumed some of the trenching work and removal of the old underground water management system in that south end where they're preparing for construction. I think this is another great sign that they're preparing to do the bypass for that water management system which will allow for that construction to continue. Another thing I want to show you of interest is up here at the battery cathode plant. Over the last few videos we've talked a little bit about these large red uh, load uh, levelers or load splitter bars that are used by the cranes for very large and very awkwardly shaped items. Today, as you can see by this image, they are using that to prepare to lift this very large platform with machinery up to the third floor platform. And on that platform, as you can see here, they have a railing system. So once it's put on there, they'll be able to slide it inside for installation. So pretty neat to see how that works. I'm also going to talk a little bit about some of the deliveries on the south end in a little, little bit more detail before we get into the video. And uh, I hope that you enjoy that presentation and the information as well. So let's get into that discussion now. For today's discussion item, I want to talk about these items that I showed you on my previous 8 March video. Now, all of this was delivered on the south end of the building, as you can see, and it was being moved onto that temporary platform by that crane that you can see in the right hand image and then into General Assembly. Now, this is part of the factory where they are setting up General Assembly lines two and three, one of which will be supporting the Cybertruck. So it's very important to see all of this equipment. But what exactly is it? Who makes it? And I'll give you some examples of that as well. Now, fortunately, when I saw these items arrive, I was able to get close enough and get some images of the labels. And all of these parts come from a company called Mino. It's a Chinese company, it was established in 2008. And as you can see here from some of the description from their website, they're a high-tech enterprise that specializes in manufacturing solutions for automotive industry and also industrial manufacturing enterprises in general industries. They also specialize in building block intelligent production lines, and they provide automotive body and white intelligent manufacturing lines for domestic and import companies all around the world. Now here's a bit more information about their company, but you'll note the link is at the bottom of the screen. It's also in the video description if you would like to go to their site and learn more. But they have adopted the concept of industrial assembly line operation relying on digital technologies and info management systems. They promote small batch and low cost flexible intelligent production. They use standardized businesses of non-standard products, trade business and data service businesses. And they lead the automotive industry to provide full life cycle options to customers. So what we're actually seeing is the parts necessary to finish the assembly of the production lines for General Assembly 2 and 3 that Tesla and the contractors have been working feverishly in the southwest corner of the building for the last 8-10 months. And we also know that they've been doing reconfiguration work of the second floor and adding a fourth floor mezzanine. Recently there was a YouTube video that uh, you can see here from Giga Shanghai and it kind of shows you some of the way that this would look inside. And I would recommend you take a look at the video. The link is at the bottom of the screen if you'd like to see how these parts and components that are being delivered from Mino would likely look and operate here at Giga Texas. I hope you found this brief discussion uh, helpful and informative and kind of puts into context what we're seeing arrive at the site, where it's going inside the factory, what is it for, how will it operate, and the importance of seeing items such as this arriving now for products such as the Cybertruck, which is coming up in just a matter of months when initial production is scheduled to uh, start up. As always, thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate it. Now let's get into the video and see what Giga Texas looks like today. 
A special thank you to all of my outstanding Patreons for your continued encouragement and support. Patreon members get access to hundreds of high-resolution photos, previews of the future material, and direct dialogue with me. If you would like to support my channel, please consider becoming a patron using this link, which is also in the video description. Please also consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons as this helps as well. Thank you. My drones are ready and raring to go. Let's go flying over Giga, Texas. Starting off today on the south end, there's a lot of interesting developments on this part of the site. And once we fly around, just to give you a good view of the overall picture, we'll take a look at some of these in detail. If you look at the base of the uh, tower and underneath the power lines, this is where we've seen some of the utility crews removing some of those uh, shorter power lines that uh, needed to be removed for the construction on this side to continue. And when we get a little bit lower, you'll be able to see that not only has that happened, but additional work as well. But this is a good overall view of the south end from the east looking to the west. And now we'll pull away and take a look at a few more interesting uh, developments here on the east side. As mentioned in my previous video, this clearing is getting more excavation work as you can see, but also they have that new road heading off to the northeast, which connects near where the warehouse on wheels and another large clearing is being prepared. As we turn back to the main factory, some interesting developments here I want to point out to you. Uh, you can see those two chutes coming down from the second floor body in white. That opening to the right of those chutes, and I'll show you here, you can see some model Ys coming out. This is the new location that completed model Ys once they finished general assembly are moved by the end of line workers out of the building and over to the uh, new vehicle testing and calibration lot. So this is a change. I've talked about it before, but today you got a chance to see some Model Ys coming out on this side of the building. So that shows that on the inside, they've had some pretty good reconfiguration of how the General Assembly for Model Ys uh, is oriented and that is to allow for some of the construction going on in the inside as well. As I bring the drone down a little bit lower you can see more trucks delivering items and here next to this truck with the accordion uh, trailer the crews are working on these green box transformers. This gives you a good idea of the size of these but also as I zoom in you can see the conduit has been removed and it's just uh, uh, loose next to that. Um, the telephone poles, the smaller ones have been removed and the crews are getting ready to remove these green boxes to allow construction. You can see in the upper left hand corner of the screen is where the new boxes are located. As we pan back around towards the west and then to the north you can see how the south end of the cyber pond looks and also the work that is going on here on the south end as well. And I'll start with the discussion here with the Mino parts that uh, are being delivered. As you can tell here, there's a truck with some very large of those white painted uh, beams and columns. You can see another forklift moving some parts. Many other ones have arrived in different colors of wrapping. And we talked about this in the video intro. So with what I discussed there, you should have a pretty good idea of what we are seeing and the importance of all this material arriving. Now it's all being moved up onto the top floor of the uh, uh, General Assembly using this temporary loading platform. You can also see those kind of brown steel beams on the ground. Those are being loaded up as well. 
and they're being used to complete that fourth floor mezzanine. Again, we talked about that in the intro, and I had some other images. Uh, so take a look at that intro if you uh, missed it, so you can understand, again, what is going on at the uh, loading platform and the significance of those parts. As I pull away, you can see this new trenching operation. Looks to me like what they are doing is they are continuing to now remove some of that old stormwater pipe system that was under the ground here. They're putting in a, uh, or reconfiguring a concrete vault with a top with a manhole cover and getting ready to start connecting the big uh, steel corrugated pipe bypasses. And this is another great indication that they are now getting to the point where construction here can resume. The big piece that they need to finish up is to get that water management system bypass installed and operational so that they can remove all of the old parts. Um, and uh, that is what they're doing right now. You can see on the west side of this small road, there's some more trench work and earthwork going on. And I'm gonna turn the drone back to the east so you get a good perspective of how that south end appears with that trenching operation where they're removing all of those old stormwater pipes and other systems under the ground and all of those Mino parts being uh, delivered and uh, moved into the factory. Looks like the Griffin dewatering system is still operational here. The linear plate shaft, uh, this round uh, circular device Looks like it has reached its final depth. It's about eight to nine meters in, in uh, total depth right now. It looks like all of the ladders and other machinery have been removed right now. So for whatever reason, this is at a steady state point at the moment, and we'll see if they are ready to start installing equipment at the bottom of that uh, shaft soon. We can also see on this uh, southwest corner, now moving towards the north, the white stain that's being applied by the NACOG crews. You can also see how they're starting to extend more of the plastic on the windows, doing some of the uh, pressure washing to clean up the concrete uh, walls in preparation for the stain and the work at the bottom where the receiving doors are located. So a lot of progress with that uh, white stain. As we continue to move our way towards the north, we'll get a good view of just how this main entrance looks today. Not a whole lot of changes, as you can see, but I'll give you a couple of uh, different views just to uh, appreciate the design of the West Main entrance and then how it looks today. Bring the drone back here where we see the landscaping trees. Some of the trees also put into these concrete planters. But what I'm doing here is just trying to see what the progress is with these white pipes and the interface with the steel corrugated pipe. I think this might be for roof drain reconfiguration, but I'm not completely sure. And it looks like the work here on the lift station is completed as well. We're gonna to continue to go up towards the north. There's an interesting delivery going on. That Finn truck is bringing in some office equipment, which is uh, very interesting to see, and also some cabinetry as well. And here on the west side of the 4680 production section of the building, we can see this large tank. This is for liquid nitrogen, and that's obviously part of the manufacturing process that's used to make the 4680 battery cells. And I'll pop up onto the northwest corner of the roof, and you can see a lot of the vapors coming out of these vents and also the cooling uh, enclosures nearby and this is also related to the production of 4680 materials and it's good to see that there is a lot of activity there as well.
here at the north end of the paint shop between the two platforms we see a growing amount of this material covered in a semi-transparent uh, plastic coating. I'm not sure exactly what all these materials are, but uh, it just shows that there's continued installation of materials and uh, uh, other production related items for that second paint modular system that was installed over the last eight months or so. Here at the northwest corner of the uh, casting machine structure, we see two Model Y painted bodies. These are 2170 variants as they have floors and they do not have the front uh, castings. And nearby we see more of these castings that uh, are being ready for recycling. There are some different uh, variations of some of these castings. You can see what looks like a metal structure where the dashboard might be. I don't know if that's just a uh, remnant of the casting process, perhaps as a heat sink for the material or if it's something new. I'm bringing the drone up over where the castings that will be used for Model Ys are stored. And what I want to do is give you a closer in view of this receiving uh, dock area where the concrete has been poured. You can see those green load levelers. And I pointed these out in the past saying that these are unique because on this particular side of the building, this is the only one, as you can see here with this zoom in, that has kind of this extended shelf of concrete with the load levelers exterior to the doors. And there's none other like this on the factory and I'm not sure exactly why, but uh, it is something of note. I know some people have pretty strong opinions that uh, this is no big deal, but I would just ask why are these different based on what we see on the rest of the factory. So just something I wanted to highlight. You can see how the roundabout uh, is continuing to uh, finish up its uh, construction. It looks like most of the uh, landscaping is installed and some of the signs have been installed to help direct traffic. This smaller testing and calibration lot still is very busy. We have not seen the other canopies with solar panels being installed on the south end of the superchargers yet, but otherwise it's a very busy section of the factory and part of production. I mentioned earlier where the Model Ys were coming out of that new section of the factory and that is where they come. After they are prepared in that smaller section, they're brought over here to the new car staging and transportation lot. And this is where all of the trucks are loaded up and then deliver the vehicles to the various uh, uh, receiving locations around Austin and also to the Taylor Rail Yard about 15 miles or so to the north. As we fly over the warehouse on Wheels Yard, just going to come down lower and give you just a different perspective of this area and some of the materials that are being delivered and stored here today. Now we know that they've been working on the electrical conduit extending from the battery cathode plant to this direction, but now we see crews nearby where this crane is located getting ready to move another concrete vault. And they're also preparing some more of the pieces of pipe that are necessary to run the conduit. And next to this power pole, you can see where that uh, uh, installation is going to happen. You can also see some of the pipes extending here. This will eventually extend all the way over to the west and connect to the power grid to ensure that they have the power necessary to run all of these buildings in this complex. The die shop continues to get more of the concrete slab work and also you can see many of the columns and beams are being painted white throughout the entire building inside and out. You see some more of these concrete vaults where the conduit is uh, branching off and into the battery cathode plant. On the left hand side you can see more of the paintwork that is underway right now and also some of the 
large receiving doors are starting to be uh, apparent. We can also see some pipe work being done inside the die shop as well. Over here on the galvanized steel structure, we see these large components wrapped in plastic, still waiting for installation. Some of the red pumps nearby, some other materials waiting for installation, and then overall, uh, how the structure looks with quite a bit of the pipes and manifolds and other equipment installed. And this is a good bird's eye view looking down to kind of see how this continues to progress. Uh, there's a lot of equipment going on here. It's uh, quite a, uh, a process to get this uh, completed, but uh, they're definitely making a lot of good progress. As we focus in on the north end of the die shop, one of the things that's very obvious is that we now have more bridge cranes. In fact, here in the east and the central bay, we can see these red bridge cranes with Tesla. And we also know that a, another bridge crane has been installed here on the west bay. It's much larger and it's stationed right now about midpoint. I'll zoom in so you can see how the very deep and highly reinforced section for this slab appears today. You can see the workers are continuing to install rebar. They also have these very deep forms and the size of the workers gives you a good clue about the size and depth of this particular foundation. I'll fly the drone around the corner and we'll give you a different perspective on how this deep foundation construction is continuing. We can also see some other work going on here on the west side as well. But uh, this is a good view of that uh, deep foundation. And also as I zoom in, you can see a lot of crates have been delivered and in the middle section of the building, there's another large slab that is being prepared for concrete as well. So a lot of work continuing inside the die shop today and uh, they're continuing at a very quick rate to try to get this building prepared. Um, this is a good view of the north end and how this looks today. And as we continue to fly to the north, you can see how that clearing uh, and that large hill continues to be removed, how some of the materials are being stored here. And up to the far north, that large clearing with a lot of the materials that uh, I'm still monitoring, that is permitted for a north logistics lot, so I'm waiting to see if I can detect any construction beginning up there. But as I turn the drone back towards the battery cathode plant, there's a good view of uh, materials, some of the workshops, and some of the containers that are stored up in this particular side of the construction site. As we approach back towards the battery cathode plant, a few things of note. One, it looks like there's work going on in the cell test lab, the smaller steel structure on the left. These trailers look to me like they may have some new crane parts or maybe they're removing a crane. Uh, you can see some of the weights and one of the struss, uh, truss structures. You also see more of those wooden crates have been delivered with materials next to the building and generally how this part of the east side appears today. Now there's work going on here with these uh, wooden frames and I'm not sure exactly what they are preparing but there's quite a bit of activity here making these uh, various forms uh, around some of the equipment as well. As I continue farther to the south and we see how some of these white painted platform components look today and some of these blue containers we can also see how this operation with the crane, that very large red load splitter is being connected to this uh, assembled platform with equipment. It'll be moved up on top of the platform and you can see that rail system, that red rail system, and that will allow them to slide it into the building for assembly. So quite an interesting operation and this now without a doubt answers what is the purpose of this very large uh, red bar. 
And I hope that uh, you appreciate those images and it helps, uh, like I say, answer that mystery. Another thing that I noticed as I brought the drone up and looking back on the east side, and I'll zoom in a little bit, but not sure, but it looks like in front of that large opening, they're doing some preparation of the ground. Uh, maybe uh, they might be putting some gravel or perhaps maybe getting ready to start doing some concrete there as well. So another thing to uh, monitor. So let's move over back towards the west and take a look at some other activity on the site today. As you can see by the long black HDPE pipes, the crews have been busy fuse welding them together. There's three long sections and there's some more excavation in that corner area. We can also see these steel corrugated pipes and some of the concrete pipes that will be used for a underground water management system and some more of that blue water pipe as well. There's the drill is near these two transformers. A lot of people have pointed out that there's most likely going to be some more parts of the electrical substation or switch yard installed just south of those transformers. So perhaps that's what the drill is doing there. We can see that the work on these footings, some to support the V-top circuit breakers on the north and south, and then others to support that last and seventh A-frame are pretty much done. So we should start seeing some steel assembly there. Speaking of which, you can see that the parts to this last steel power pole had been moved up as we predicted on the previous video next to that mount so we should see this uh, installed and assembled very soon looks like it's three sections so it may be just a little bit shorter than the other power poles nearby as i reposition the drone to look back to the southwest this gives you a good overall view of the uh, work that's going on here on the north end of the electrical switch yard and also how the electrical switch yard appears today I'll give you a, just a good pan around this north side. So not only are we seeing that uh, large power pole being installed and some trench work related to the underground water management system, we also see quite a few of these uh, utility trucks, this large man lift uh, and other activity continuing to put the wires onto those new large power poles. And I'll bring the drone around at a little higher altitude to give you a good perspective of the work and the amount of the power lines that have been installed and then will continue to be installed in this portion of the construction site. And all of this again is necessary to ensure that the electrical switch yard is operational. Now, there's a couple of other interesting developments here on the west side of the electrical switch yard. This clearing is where the uh, mega pack battery electric storage system will be installed and for the longest time I've been telling you that it's going to be rectangular although it looks triangular. Now what we are seeing is work is continuing here on the south end for earthwork. They're also preparing across the road to help make this more rectangular. There was also the last original metal gate for the Martin Marietta system very close to where that white truck is and as you can see it has been removed. Uh, and my previous video, it was still present. So that uh, removal work has happened within the last 48 hours. And you can see how they're continuing to prepare this grade and the entire section here. I would expect them to continue over to that black uh, silt fence right at the edge of that green square. And that will help make this uh, area prepared for that mega pack installation sometime in the near future. As I come back over the power lines and then come back down, what I want to show you is not only is the blue water pipe on the left, but you can see this black HDPE pipe extending into this trench and it's going underneath Tesla Road. You can see the horizontal drill, kind of that orange drill uh, on the other side of the road. And this is how the connection for this treated water pipe will be made. Uh, underneath the area where the drill is, is where the Connection has already been made to the treated water pipe that extends underneath that section of the land all the way to the south and underneath the Colorado River to the treated water plant on the south side. So there you have it, a view of Giga Texas on this Friday, the 10th of March, 
2023. A lot of activity on all parts of the site. Some very important activity on the south end with the Mino parts being installed inside General Assembly 2. This is part of the production processes that will support the Cybertruck and perhaps other vehicles and products in the future. So as always, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and in the information and I wish you a great weekend. Take care.